I went out one night with a buddy to Arnold's bar in St. Augustine doing karaoke and uh I'd never done karaoke, never really even done anything like that and um I did a beastie song, Fight for Your Right to Party mm-hmm. and uh I, I, there's this this fat lady that just kept blocking the monitor dancing, so I just started making up my own words. Oh, the lyrics. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I mean, I'm like so, and it was it, I started. There were a bunch of my buddies there, so I started talking about the sand pits and the river and fishing while I was doing it. And so just freestyle and improv. Yeah, it was funny, and uh, so this dude came up to me and he's like, uh, "Hey, have you ever heard of Colt Ford?" And this was right about the time Colt was really starting to mm-hmm. do the thing, and I was like, "No, nah, I hadn't." And he took me out of his truck and let me hear it. I was like. I'm going to do that. I want to do that. That's that's cool. And the first thing I thought of, man, the amount of people I know, mm-hmm. the amount of people I got to please, they'll jump on this and support. And they did. They supported me more than I ever thought. And uh, my deal was I got to move to Nashville to make it happen. And you hear about that. And everybody's heard that story a thousand times. Uh, apparently that secret's got out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, when I left again, it was like, because I started creating that buzz in Florida and locally, and uh, it's like I turned my back on them again. I'm like, I'm just going to make myself better. Mm-hmm. I've quit doing drugs. I had money in the bank. I went <laughs> went and filed bankruptcy. And the reason why is because I knew it was about to be a long couple years on me, or year, or however long it took. So I let the girl stay in the condo, called my lawyer, and was like, how long can you tie up this <laughs> bankruptcy in court? And he's like, minimum 18 months, you know. I'm like, cool. So I told him, y'all got to be out in 17 months. Give me a month. <laughs> so that's how I got paid for a year. They sent me their rent money. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what. I mean, they could have ruined the place. I don't know. I didn't care because I knew I was giving it up. Uh, even in my court hearing, like they're like, dude, my credit was great. Uh, seven, like 740, and I really had no bills other than my truck and my mortgage. And it's like, what are you doing? I, what's ha- I can't pay my bills anymore. Like, why? I lost my job. <laughs> Why'd you lose it? Because I'm going to be a country rapper. <laughs> and I just never forget the look on his face. Like, <laughs> what is it? You've done so much over the last few years to make yourself look sane in the community. <laughs> and now you're going to do this. And now you're going to do what? <laughs> so uh, that's really how it happened as far as getting into music. But there was a time in between then um, before that all happened where, again, I never felt like I could get enough money. And the dope heads I was running with and whatnot, I mean, I was always a big MMA fan and I would never really had any training never was a real badass by any means but uh i i liked to fight and didn't know why and then and I, I know why now it was because i was a coke addict <laughs> and uh an alcoholic yeah. and uh we'd go to bars and clubs and and legitimately start something with somebody um not in the not to the physical part but to get them jawing enough that we could get enough money passed around that we could set up a fight either in the backyard the next day or in the parking lot that night and just bare knuckle yeah yeah, just because we needed the money Mm -hmm. uh out but it was so crazy because i took a certain percentage of my check every month put in the bank didn't touch it the rest of it i blew and when i blow it I'd either go knock somebody out or for a hundred bucks or we'd set up a fight in the Holiday Inn parking lot or whatever, you know, on the beach, whatever it was, just for an extra hundred bucks, 50 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever it was. And I mean, get your ass whooped, whoop somebody's ass. It it was just, it was ignorant. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but I, it's not something I like to talk about because it was just, it was was terrible. I mean, luckily that was only like a three or four month span. Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah, there you was no keep that up for spe- long. Yeah, especially not really being trained in anything. I was just bigger, and, and I was actually a lot. I was a lot quicker for my size than people would ever think. And that was funny. And still, I don't want to give away all my secrets unless, because in case somebody <laughs> wants to fight me now, as <laughs> most people will generally think, big dude, Slow. I don't want to get on the ground with him. He can wrestle. I never could wrestle. I was quick on my feet and had quick hands, and still do. So I always like to stand up, mm-hmm. and uh, I would. I would technical technical box more than throwing those haymakers like people do in a real fight. Therefore, I was generally 
able to win the majority of them by letting somebody tire out or being able to take a couple of hits mm -hmm. and then get inside on them and, and throw a haymaker or the hardest bone in your body, elbow to a temple buckles legs a lot. And uh, Was that elbow still? Uh... It, you know, it, it – yeah, it, it's still to this day. I can be holding a glass and just drop it out of the blue, mm -hmm. but it's it's just you hear the old people say it. It's weather, mm -hmm. and things like that. It's, it's the truth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it it's is. just real. You know, it gets tender sometimes. But nah, uh, it wasn't until I was 34, 35 years old that uh, I got into the MMA uh, world as far as training like a MMA fight. I, I had sense at this point. I knew there was no. Right. Going after right, that. Right, right, right. I just wanted to be in that world uh, and learn how to correctly submit somebody or defend myself or throw a punch, you know, this and that. And uh, to this day, I am back doing it now. Uh, so do you find it as addicting as, uh, yes, as and, the other stuff? Mm -hmm. And that was the, excuse me, that was one of the blessings. I say, you know, it, I've always heard that people quit an addiction and, and, and start a new Pick one. Pick up a new one, right? But if you pick up a positive one, <laughs> it's okay. Right. And uh, I did. I had gotten into the best shape I'd ever been in my life was five years after I was done playing ball. It didn't make sense, but it made sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I felt better and, and I looked better. But then <laughs> the music world came about. And, and again, not like Animal House, but I'd seen enough movies and watched enough or read enough biographies that you know, I thought that you had to live like a rock star. Mm -hmm. So the first year I was out on the road, uh, man, I think I threw a punch every every other show, if not almost every show, <laughs> like, the first year. It was just I'm sure the bookers were loving that. Yeah, have you it, back. no, I, dude, I, uh, d the Grizzly Rose in Denver mm -hmm. uh, knocked the sound guy out. In front of <laughs> three, Danny and Demon will tell you that story. Jeez. This is I was that was I. It was one of the first times we'd ever got on the road to do anything. We were on the road with rehab, mm -hmm. do like ten shows with them, and. Uh, <clears throat> they actually, I mean, sold out because they were selling out everything. Right. And um, we opened and they cut our set short by like three songs because sound check ran over because the sound guy was late. Mm. And this was a nice, you know, nice, nice venue it's where a great he, club. he mics the stage and, and we go and sound just cuts off and we're in the middle of a song. And uh, he's like, get off the stage. Oh, he, he cut you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. It, well, it's, it's time because yeah. he had made it known to us pre and, and Danny and those guys when we got there. He's like, uh, we have a curfew. We have this and that. We run on my clock. This guy's no longer there. Yeah. But it was one of the worst venues we've ever been to. I love the venue. Right. Worst right. sound guy. Worst guy to deal and, with. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we get done. We walk in the back. And Danny's like, fuck y'all doing? Or excuse me, like, what are y'all doing? Uh, Y'all, y'all. I was like, man, they cut us. Said y'all were up at five. He's like, nah. He said, we're, we're not, we're not going on. A, you know, whatever the case may be. So the sound guy walks in the back and he says something, and and uh, Chris, the drummer, is like, boo, why don't you take care of him? Oh god. <laughs> he just dropped. They're like, no, 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 not like that. Like, I was like, oh my bad. I didn't know. They're like, who's gonna run sound now? Oh like, my I, gosh. His, I mean, literally, his he Don BB like his legs buckle and he hits the ground and. Um, so we go over to AF Rays the next night in Greeley, Colorado. It's three feet of snow on the ground. And uh, we come into play, and there was a Cholo gang in there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we didn't know any better. <laughs> I, I say we did, we knew better, but we didn't realize the magnitude of what gang life was really like. Right. And like, what's it doing in Denver? Mm -hmm. But it was there. And they took offense to a couple of our white trash redneck songs, and one of them threw a bottle. And... Um, I just reacted, it came off the stage and didn't realize what I was getting into. There's a whole lot of yeah, them. Yeah, he hit the first dude, hit the second dude, and then I look over and uh, the guy I was playing with, uh, a lot of people know his name, but I, I'm not going to use it, uh, said, dude, you all right? I'm like, I'm fine, we're trying to get out. He's like, no, you all right? I looked down and like my guts just cut open. Wow. But it, I got cut with a bottle and uh, didn't know. So, adrenaline and all that yeah. and went and uh, got it stitched up and that was kind of like realizing okay maybe this isn't the life you're supposed to live on the road this is going to kill me and now granted i was in the best shape of my life i was 250 i was probably seven and a half percent body fat i was you know four years later on the road 150 pounds i put on all kind of just trouble health wise and all that but i've done it to myself 
and that's something we'll get into in a few minutes. But <clears throat> long story short, it was a there was a there was a big learning curve with it too, and uh, realized that you you can't always be the baddest one around quickly. Mm -hmm. And then again, like you said, people aren't going to book you. People aren't going to. So I had to I had to do like a complete life transformation again uh, if I wanted to do this. Yeah. Because at the time. At the time, really, <clears throat> you had um, really Colt was the, the only name out. You know, there were a lot of us that were, you know, uh, myself and Bottleneck and Little Axe and Georgia Boys and and, and um, Bubba. Bubba. Well, but yeah, Bubba. All, but we'll see. We're, that's that's a really cool story too. Because I mean, we used to listen to Ugly and all this kind of stuff going to play softball. I didn't even get into softball days. I played <laughs> softball for money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we used to listen to Bubba all the time. Now that, that I can say I know, and it's cool. It's like, yeah. man, this is really cool. But, uh, you know, as far as the whole country rap thing, there really wasn't a word for it then, you know, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Long story short is uh, we were all trying to get there, and we were all kind of pioneers of the sound. And, you know, uh, so I, I really had to change if it was going to be taken seriously, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the public. But... It's been a it's been an epic journey getting here 